quiet place. Quiet, please. QuietPlease.org presents Quiet Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and features Paul Neerum. Quiet Please for tonight is called Be a Good Dog, Darling. Are you married, sir? Well, accept my congratulations. I was married once. Oh no, not now. I have a dog. He's around here somewhere. Under something, or behind something, waiting for a chance to nip my ankles, or inflict more serious injury if she can. A cocker spaniel, an evil little beast named Olivia. Yes, it is rather a strange name for a dog, I agree. But you see, my wife was named Olivia. Touching, isn't it? Shut up, Olivia. Olivia, dear. Olivia tries to have a mind of her own. But then, Olivia had a mind of her own. Dear, dear. Yes, she really did. While I was married to Olivia, I was never allowed to smoke in the house. I had to go down to the basement and sit in front of the furnace when I wanted to smoke. Now I invite your attention to the pipe rack. That's right. Not one pipe, but fourteen pipes. One for each day of the week, and one for each night and I smoke whenever I want to. Now, for example. <laughs> Shut up, Olivia. So many times I wanted to say that to my wife. So many times I wanted to sock my wife. I even thought of murdering her. But I didn't. Oh no. <laughs> now I can say shut up, Olivia, whenever I want to. I can even sock you, Olivia, if I feel like it. I could. Oh, I wouldn't murder you, Olivia. Why, no, darling. Being a dog's tough enough, isn't it? I don't suppose you ever met an encyclopedia salesman before, did you? Socially, I mean. I may have called upon you at your home, possibly, but I doubt you'd remember me. That's one of the secrets of success as a salesman of encyclopedias, sir. To submerge one's own personality in the personality of the product. No man, however impressive, can possess the sheer impact contained in those 24 volumes. Bound in half Morocco, complete with index and yearly supplement, and yours for only $8 a month. Well, for heaven's sake, excuse me. You excuse me. You can understand, though, why it is that I have been something of a success in my profession. I live, eat, drink, and sleep encyclopedias. Be still, Olivia. Yes, Olivia knows. Don't you, darling? Oh, not going to talk, eh, my dear? <laughs> I was saying... Or was I? Dear me, I seem to be getting absent-minded. I must do something about that. I was saying that encyclopedia is not only a cultural thing to have around one's domicile, but it is actually useful as well as ornamental. One can find the most amazingly useful ideas in an encyclopedia, some things you'd never suspect, even, and useful. Oh my. Oh, I'm not trying to sell you an encyclopedia, sir. It's really after hours. Although I always say that a true salesman keeps no office hours. He's something like a soldier, I always feel. Advancing, retreating. Hey, did you hear that? That's just the way my wife used to act whenever I talk shop. Olivia, you're wonderful. But shut up, darling, or Papa will smack your caboose for you with a slipper. Oh, that's right, you ate the slipper. Well, I shall buy another one. I shall buy a pair, Olivia, strictly for spanking purposes. You see, dear little dog Olivia... Human beings have advantages that little dogs don't have. Human beings can go to stores and buy things, and little dogs can't. 
you get Papa, Olivia? No pretty hats, no new fall coats, no new shoes, not a thing. Isn't that awful, Olivia? <coughs> what? Why, sure, she's crying. Olivia cries a lot when I talk to her like that. You know, an encyclopedia is a wonderful thing. Just think what the encyclopedia has done for me. Oh yes, I make a surprisingly comfortable living, sir, by selling it. But I suspect that I am probably the only encyclopedia salesman in the world who reads this product. It has taught me a great deal. Let me give you an example. Just select any volume there at random. Just any volume. This one? Good. Volume 6. MAF to MUG. <coughs> My, isn't that a coincidence? <coughs> Even Olivia sees what a coincidence it is. You know this volume, don't you, Olivia? <coughs> you certainly do, darling, don't you? Shut up, dear. <laughs> it really is a sensational coincidence, sir, that you pick this volume. Look, how it opens to page 3147. Olivia, be quiet. Look at page 3147, sir. You see the heading on that page? Read it yourself. Magical formulas. <laughs> yes, sir, that was Olivia's downfall. Oh, I didn't believe in magic either. But I was awfully tired of Olivia. I won't tell you all the things she did to me. She did plenty. There's two or three other volumes on the shelf there that are pretty well thumbed. The one labeled POI to something else. The one labeled MUR to something else. But this one is my favorite. Look, this formula here. Read it. No, no, don't read it all. I'll read it to you. <coughs> I won't read it all to him, Olivia. One dog is enough, dear. Listen. Hey guys, are all well, Hiram. Be this one, me more humankind. Be this one, me more man. Me woman. Me ought. Be this one, furred and pawed. Be this one, fanged and clawed. Be this one, dog. <laughs> Do you feel strange, sir? Do you feel your heckles begin to rise? Don't worry, I won't read it all. Look at Olivia. Be a good dog, darling. Why, yes, that's right. Yes, I tried it one night. One night after Olivia, my wife, had been exceptionally trying. She had gone to bed. I went upstairs with this volume, opened to page 3147, in my hand. Olivia looked charming in her sleep. She was a taffy blonde, hair just the color of a little cocker there. <laughs> All I did was read the formula, all the way through, and as I whispered the last words, the ones I didn't read to you, why, there on the bed was the cutest little cocker spin that you ever saw, all tangled up in a nightgown. Why, how do you do, sir? You remember me, Grover Hayes? The encyclopedia salesman. <laughs> Oh, I knew that would place me with you. You remember I said when we last talked that I tried to submerge my personality in that of my product? Yes, yes. Oh, Olivia? Olivia's fine, thank you. Olivia's in fine fettle. I'm taking home a muzzle for her. Yes, I've just got to do something about it. She bit my wife again today. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm married again. I know. One would think, what is it, that old proverb, once bitten, twice shy? Well, but really, Olivia never bit me. Not until after our little evening with page 3147. <laughs> and now she's going to be muscled. <laughs> well, I suppose it's just because I simply can't resist women. That was one of the things that Olivia uh, objected to. It made things quite unpleasant. Olivia was very, very jealous. She still is. I told you how she bit Grace. Oh, 
I suppose I shouldn't have gotten married again, but I got lonesome. And Grace is really a very nice person. You must meet her sometime. And then, if this marriage doesn't work out, yes, she's quite pretty. A brunette. Tall. The regal type. I think that's what one would say. Rather like, uh, Doberman Pinscher, you know? Just one drawback. Same as Olivia. She's insanely jealous of other women. I don't like that. Oh well. By the way, would you be interested in my encyclopedia now? Comes in very handy sometimes, you know? Oh, that's right. You're not married, are you? Well, nice to have seen you. I must run along. Grace is waiting for me, and I really must stop off and say hello to a friend of mine on the way home. Oh, and if you do decide to get married, remember, a $10 bill puts the encyclopedia in your home at once. Where have you been, Grover? No, Grace. You said you'd be home promptly at five, and here it is, quarter to seven. My dear, must I remind you that the profession of sales promotion knows no hours? Grover, please. I've heard that so many times. I'm like a soldier, advancing, retreating. Is that powder on your lapel, soldier? What? Where? Don't bother fussing. There isn't any. I just wanted to see what you'd do if I said that. That is unworthy of you, my dear. Is it? Do I smell my nemesis, though, Grover, dear? Well, uh, perhaps you shouldn't wear so much of it. Me? Me wear my nemesis? You know perfectly well I wouldn't give that stuff shelf room. I hate it. Well, I'm sure I wouldn't know my nemesis if you served it to me on muffins, my love. However, you reek of it. Reek is a rather strong word, Grace. I don't smell anything. Where did you get it? I tell you. Oh, that. That indeed. Where did you get it? At the barber shop, dearest. Merely at the barber shop. Darling, what kind of barber shop do you patronize? I consider that beneath my dignity. That's fine, soldier, but one of these days... One of these days what? Grover, you're not fooling me very much, really. Grace, I don't know what you're talking about. In that case, you wouldn't understand what I meant by one of these days. Sometimes you baffle me. I'm happy that I can't return the compliment, Grover. You're suspicious of me. You took the words right out of my mouth. All right, then. In that case, I will go and have my dinner at a convenient restaurant. Hold on, and I'll get my coat. I do not require your company, my dear. Nevertheless, you're gonna have it, my love. I want you where I can keep my eye on you, brother. All right, all right. Come here, you. You do stink of that foul perfume, you know. Look, Grover, you talked me into marrying you. And I've tried to be a good wife to you. I even loved you a little. Grace. No, no pawing. Listen to me. Maybe I still love you, even after six weeks of being married to you. Even after you keeping that dreadful little mutt, Olivia, underfoot day in and day out, and my nylons are in rags. Even after you came home the third day we were married smelling loudly of daiquiris and taboo, of all things, and tonight sprayed from head to toe with my particular aversion, my nemesis, even after all those things, I think I still love you, and I'm going to keep you, even after I'm so suspicious I could bust. I'm going to keep you. Well, Grace, I... I... But... B-U-T, but. But what, darling? But if I ever catch you cheating, that's all, brother. Grace, I... And so, until tomorrow at this same time, I am, like the man on the radio says, 
quietly yours. Well, I... Get my coat, darling. And we'll go eat a fine large dinner, and then we'll come home, and you can sit in the corner and stare at Olivia and read the encyclopedia. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that, couldn't I? Grover. Yes, my dear? I was downtown today. Were you? Yes. Aren't you interested? Of course, my dear. Oh, is that encyclopedia more interesting than I am? Why, I'm sorry, Grace. I was, um, studying. I see. I was passing that new cocktail lounge in the Jefferson Hotel. Were you? Around 3.30. 3.25, to be precise. Oh. Just before I got to the door, I saw someone I knew come out. Oh, you did, I mean. My husband. Who? Oh, me. Why, uh, was I there? I didn't think you saw me. Why, no, I'm sorry. Are I... you? Why, yes. You'll be sorry, Grover. What? On a sudden impulse... I have sudden impulses sometimes, you know. On a sudden impulse, I walked into the cocktail lounge. You did? Hey, guy. Cyril. Don't mumble, Grover. Yes, I walked in. And you know who was sitting at the table? Hey, guy. Cyril. No, no it was Elizabeth Carter. Elizabeth Carter? I hey. was so glad to see her. Even if she does wear that awful my nemesis all the time. Does she? I mean... Yes. I wanted to give her a handkerchief of hers that I found. Y you did? I... In your pocket, Grover. No, Grace. I warned you, Grover. Grover, I'm going to give you the greatest claw on over. Huggy. I'm going to... Hey, guy. Cyril Bell, Hiram. Be this one the more humankind. Be this one the man, the woman, the art. Oh, hello. Glad to see you again. Oh, nothing much. Got bit by a dog. No, not Olivia. New one. Doberman Pincher, named Grace. A real meanie. This? A muzzle. Those Doberman pinchers bite hard, especially when they hate you. That's right, I was married to a girl named Grace. Oh, sure. Still selling encyclopedias. Great thing, that book. Sure you don't want to buy one? Well, this is the last chance you'll have to buy one from me, you see. I'm leaving town. Oh, I don't know. I'm tired of it here. New fields to conquer and all that. You know, you can only sell so many encyclopedias in one town. More opportunities someplace else. Start all over. Besides, I want to get a place where I can let the dogs run. Olivia and Grace. Put up a big high fence. Certainly I'm going to take them. They remind me of my wives. Both of them tried to cage me in. So I'll try it on them. Oh, say, you know, the oddest thing. I told you how Olivia... The Cocker Spaniel, remember? How she hated Grace? How she kept biting her ankles and everything? Funny. Olivia doesn't hate this big Doberman Pinscher at all. They're great friends. Play? No, they don't play. They just sit around and look at me. Well, nice to have seen you. Sorry I couldn't sell you an encyclopedia, but, of course, a single man. <laughs> Say, you'll think I'm crazy. Why, I'm getting married again girl named Elizabeth Carter. I don't think you know her. <sighs> I wonder how the dogs will like that. All right, Grover. Yes, all right. I know. I know, dear. Only thing is, I realize that. 
but you haven't been home for dinner a single night this week. And Wednesday night, it was half past eleven. Oh, I'm not complaining. I realize that. All right. But do try to make it fairly early, won't you? All right. I'll talk to the dogs. What? No. No, I doubt very much they'll talk to me. Goodbye, Grover. <sighs> I wish they could talk. Here, Olivia. Here, Grace. Come on, kids. Here, doggies. Well, hello there. You had a nice afternoon outside the cage? You glad to see Elizabeth? That's the good girls. Sit down, Olivia. Down. Good girl. Good girl. Piece of candy? Here, let me take off the muzzle. That's it. Good candy. You want yours off too, Gracie? All right. Did it keep her mouth all strapped down nasty? Candy for Grace? Don't snap. That's it. Good girl. Here now, both of you. Sit here by me. That's it. What's the matter, Grace? Don't you like my perfume? <laughs> Isn't that funny? Your namesake didn't like my nemesis either. You know, Grace... She was a nice girl, and she told me a very strange thing once in a cocktail lounge. That's right. She told me that she knew Grover was running around with me. And she told me she wasn't mad at me at all. She told me to watch out for Grover. You know, maybe I'm a very suspicious person, Grace, but I wonder what did become of your namesake. All right, darling. Yes, sure, sweetheart. I'll try to meet you at a quarter after eight. At Charlie's, I won't have very much time, though. Elizabeth, the most suspicious woman. Oh, no, nothing definite, but I feel it, you know? Well, I have ways of dealing with it. Why, hello, Elizabeth. I, I thought you were out in the garden. I was wondering if you'd like to drive over to the beach tonight, Grover. Oh, darling, I'm afraid I can't. I really am afraid I can't. I'm so sorry. Not another prospect. A what? A prospect? Oh, yes, this is definitely a prospect, dear. I was just talking to him on the phone when he came in. I have to meet this fellow. He's an awful bore. But he may buy the full Morocco with the supplements, and he pay cash, and... Well, you understand. Yes, I suppose so. Well, all right. I was just wishing. Maybe tomorrow night, dear. Whatever you say. I just get so, you know, with nobody but the dogs to talk to, and... What are you staring at, Grover? Didn't you lock the dogs up? Why, yes, of course. Why? I could have sworn I saw Grace standing outside the window. And she's been listening to every word I said. What are you looking for, Grover? A letter. I lost a letter. Where did you lose it, dear? I don't know. Maybe I could help you look for it if I knew where... No, no. You couldn't find it if I couldn't. Was it important? Very. Well, did you look in the desk? It isn't in the desk. I've got to find it. Well, where did you have it last? Do you know? I had it in my pocket when I went out to feed the dog. <laughs> Well, babies, another night at home for the three girls. Come on, sit on my lap, Olivia. No? Come on, honey. 
All right, but don't be so nervous. Is it going to rain? Is that what it is? Going to rain? You too, Grace. Stop sniffing at the books. Come on over here by the fire. Come on, honey. All right. Let's just have it quiet. Poor kids. That's about all of us have, isn't it? Oh, well. I should have listened to your namesake, Grace. Did he run out on her all the time, too? That's right. He sure did. With me. That's what I get. And what happens to me now? Olivia, what have you got there? Bring it here, dear. Bring it to Elizabeth. Bring it to Elizabeth. That's the good girl. Thank you, dear. Why, it's a letter. I know. I know, darling. I will. I promise you I will. Now, right away. Just as quick as I can. What? Yes, I've got to get rid of her before she starts something. Well, I think she found that letter you sent me. No, I'm not sure, but the way she looks at me makes me feel... What? Yes, I will, I will. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about it at all. I've done it before and I can do it again. Sure, I love... Wait a minute. One of those dogs is at the window again. Sit still, Grace. Please sit still or I'll have to put you outside. Don't, honey. What am I going to do? What's he going to do to me? Oh. Why didn't I listen? Why didn't I... That letter. When are you going to get rid of her, dearest Grover? <laughs> Grace, will you stop? Here I am in danger of my life, and you... What do you want? What do you want? Is there something back of the books? <laughs> Is there? Do you understand me, Grace? Are you trying to tell me something? What is it, Grace? Is there something back of the books? Back of that one? Back of the encyclopedia? Let me see. There's nothing back there, dear. Look out! Don't knock the book out of my hand! Now what do you want? What is it? Magical formulas? The ancient formula to turn a human being into a dog. <gasps> oh, Grace! Grace! Did he do that to you? <laughs> Well, Elizabeth, darling, I'm going to have to be at home with you tonight. So I see. Aren't you glad, my dear? Glad? Yes, I'm very glad, Grover. Well, that's fine. What should we do? Grover. Yes, my dear? I found the letter. Letter? The one you lost? The one asking you when you were going to get rid of me? I thought you found it. So I know what we're going to do tonight. Do you? Yes. I wonder if you do. Yes, I do. Well, darling, I'm not going to ask you to forgive me. I didn't expect you would. I'm going to read something to you. Are you? You just sit still there. Yes, of course. Just a second while I get the book. You don't know it by heart, then? No, I... Know what by heart? The formula. What do you know about the formula, Elizabeth? Grace told me about it. 
Grace. Get the book, Grover. Listen to me. Get the book. Well, I will. I'm sorry to have to do this. Did you tear the pages out? Did you? Yes, I tore it out, Grover, and destroyed it. Elizabeth! But I memorized it first, darling. You didn't. Listen, Grover. Haggai Zerubbabel Hiram. Be this one no more humankind. Be this one no man, no woman, no aught. <laughs> Be this one furred and pawed. Be this one fanged and clawed. Be this one dog. Yes? No, I'm sorry. Grover isn't here. No, I'm sorry. There's nobody here but me and the three dogs. Oh, yes, three. We have a new one now. A nasty, squalling little mongrel. I don't think it'll last long, though. The other dogs don't like it. Good night. You have been listening to Be a Good Dog, Darling. The title of today is Quiet, Please which is written and directed by Willis Cooper. Grover, the man who spoke to you, was Paul Nero. And Virginia Hergrove played Grace. Colleen Meyer was Elizabeth. David Feldman was the announcer. Freesound.org supplied the voices of the dogs. The music for Quiet Please is composed and played by Gene Perazzo. And now for a word about next week's Quiet Please, here is our writer-director, Willis Cooper. Next week's story was suggested by the words to the traditional Scottish air, The Banks of Loch Lomond. It's called The Low Road. And so, until next week at this same time, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chapel. Quiet Please came to you from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>